Is it possible to supply BeagleBone with up to 60 volts? Let's check it out. We start with recommended 5 volts. So far everything looks good, the user LEDs are blinking which means that the board is working fine. Let's stress it out a little bit and increase the voltage to 6 volts. Uh oh, something bad happened, it's not blinking anymore. Maybe the voltage is still too low, let's try 12. Still nothing, 15? Nah, 18? Does it mean we've just murdered our beagle bone? Welcome to my channel, I'm Maciek and I'm glad you are here. I hope you will learn some electronics and programming which will help us shape the world into a better place to live. Let's make the future come now. Today I want to show you how to supply the beagle bone with a non-standard voltage, even up to 60 volts. But for the beginning, let's answer the question, why would we need it at all? Originally, beagle bone can be powered from two sources, using the 5 volts external power supply connected to the barrel jack connector, which is the recommended way, or using the USB socket, which is 5 volts as well. Usually we want to interface with the external world. Let's assume that we want to connect and drive a DC motor. Because the board pins can provide a very limited current, we can't connect the motor directly. We need a motor controller that will be driven by the beagle bone using the PWM channel and then the motor controller will drive a DC motor. What's more, very often DC motors are driven by a voltage higher than 5 volts. It's common to use motors powered by 12 volts or higher. For example, e-bike motors are usually powered using 36 or 48 volts. All the things we've known so far points that if we want to build robots we need two separate power sources, which may be a little inconvenient. We need to eliminate one of them, if we get rid of the wired one, we also increase the robot range. So in this case we have to use unsupported voltage. But how we can do this? At the beginning let's check the BeagleBone power management. As we can see the hot pin from the barrel jack is connected to the AC input of the TPS. What is TPS? It's located here on the board, but let's look into the datasheet. We reveal that it's a power management chip, it's capable of providing 2 amps and it's 20 volts tolerant. So there is a hope that my board is still working. So the bigger bone can be powered directly from a power supply higher than 5 volts, but this is what we need. How can we do this? We need to convert the too high voltage into appropriate level. We have two options, the first one looks obvious. It's inexpensive and has low noise characteristics. However, it also has low efficiency, especially during higher input voltages used. Which means that we can't use it with a voltage such as one present on an e-bike battery. And here the DC-DC converter comes to the rescue. It has better efficiency and allows for the use of higher voltages even those required to power strong big DC motors. Of course, like everything in the world, the device we want to use has its dark sides. In this case, it's the cost, noise and a slightly more complicated circuit. Now, when we know that back converter is the proper way, we need to choose one. This is a Texas Instruments LM2576HV. I'm not sponsored by them, but I like their products because of nice documentation and good quality. You can see two versions, the THD and the second one is surface mounted. I choose the HV version which probably stands for high voltage. It can handle over 60 volts which will be suitable for my e-bike battery. With this device I will be able to create for example a Linux powered onboard computer for my e-bike. The converter provides 5 volts output so we have perfect match to the beagle bone power rail. We will need to design the surrounding circuit which is not very complex although it does require a quite big capacitor at the output to reduce switching noise. Let's put this knowledge all together. There is a signal called VDD 5V connected directly to the hot pin of the jack connector. After searching through the document we can see that there are only 3 occurrences of this signal on the power supply and 2 additional occurrences on the P9 connector. This is the place where we should provide output from our DC converter. Now it's time to make some electronics. I'm using KiCad software which is totally free, used and supported by CERN and can be run on all available operating systems. It's simple and if it's enough for Collider team it should work for me as well. What's great, it includes ready-made templates that we can use. Take a look. There are Arduino and Raspberry Pi templates too, but what we want is a beagle bone black. Now we are set to go. Let's draw the diagram. So, this is the mind part which looks quite similar to the one presented in the converter documentation. On the right side you can see the plus 5 volts signal which is VDD underscore 5 volts from the datasheet. Zoom it out a little bit and look at this. It's exposed on the P9 header, in the same place like in the datasheet. 
I've added some extra features. A high current pass-through connectors which allow for connection of power-hungry devices like electric motors, as well as additional connectors providing 3.3 and a 5 volt supply. Now it's time to make PCB. At the end it should look like this. Production of PCB is not expensive nowadays. For a couple of dollars anyone can produce their own board. This is the most exciting moment when the idea from your head becomes a physical device that can be touched. I've used both SMD and THT devices in this project. Now we will use the hot plate to melt the tin and solder elements to the board. We still need to solder the jack connector and the communication connectors. Unfortunately for this purpose we have to use a traditional soldering iron. This is what the final assembly device looks like. The screw connectors will be populated later. Now is the time for the final test. At the beginning start with 5 volts as before and increase it until my power supply reaches its limit. It won't go any further, but look at this. The bigger bone is being supplied with over 30 volts. If the DC converter manufacturer's datasheet is not lying, it should be able to handle almost twice the current voltage. Now this device can be used in several projects. I hope this material was helpful. You can access this project on my repository, the link is provided in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment, give it a like and subscribe. Stay creative, make incredible things. Thank you. Bye.